Hello, uh, my name is Harkakola, and uh, I'm the current world record speedrunner uh, for this game. And along with me, uh, I have uh, Meta and Tomato Angus. Uh, uh, hi, yeah, my name is Meta. Uh, I'm primarily an FPS speedrunner, um, but I have focused on Starfield a little bit. I helped with some of the routing uh, near the launch of the game, and then I was really focused on uh, the faction categories that we have. And uh, I'm not so great at any percent, but Hark really is, and I'm, I'm excited to be here. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm Tomato Angus. I, I ran this game a bit. Um, and Hark is way better than me, and I can't wait to see what you can do. All right. Uh, so before we begin, um, there's a couple things that I want to note. So we're going to be starting with a pre-made save file that skips the first uh, two-minute elevator ride of of the run. It, it's basically just a sequence where you ride down a long elevator before you hop off. Um, we, we made the decision for quality of life just to do that. So with that said, um, uh, basically as soon as I press confirm and the screen goes uh, to a loading screen, uh, that's when the time starts. So three, two, Good luck, one, Hark. Start. Let's do it, Hark. Thank you. So here at the start, I'm going to okay. walk off the elevator and go over to the side here. And doing this will cause the characters to both talk a little bit faster. And then in a couple seconds, they're going to start to run when normally they walk forward at a very slow tiptoe-ish uh, speed. There she goes. Look at her sprint. <laughs> <laughs> She's hauling it. Yeah, this whole section so, yeah, here. Um, Go ahead, Hark. So yeah, coming up here, we're about to set up a dialogue skip where we overlap some dialogue and it just saves some time. Let's see if I can get it here. Come on, with me. Let's go. Got it. Very nice. Pretty much right now, what Hark is doing, you have to kind of sit through a bunch of dialogue here. But if you talk to the NPCs while they're saying a line, you press E to interact with them. It'll skip that line. So Hark is trying to pretty much interact with them the instant they start talking, and he's looking at the captions on screen uh, of the, the line before that line as a visual cue for when he needs to press E on someone. Nice. It's <laughs> uh, RNG minip. Yeah, yeah, totally intended. And then you just got to clear out some, uh, some rocks. And again, he's going to do another dialogue thing here to skip lens. And uh, right here, he has to look away from the drill on the right. And pretty much he turns and looks at that drill turnstile thing while it bursts through the wall. And he has to wait for this invisible wall to disappear, the drill to move back. And now he's he's off, off to the races to go grab an artifact. Uh, Hark, do you want to kind of explain what this story setup is? Right, so in this game, uh, you're basically a start off as basically a no one, but you end up finding... A uh, this thing, you know, this artifact, um, it grants you little visions of the future and, you know, some of the give you powers and whatnot. Um, uh, so he's literally just picked up an artifact and, you know, we have this great, great vision and then we pass out for, for a little bit and, you know, basically the character's like, ooh, that was really cool. I want to find out more about what that is. And then you just go off into the universe to to, you know, find more of these things and figure out what it all means. Okay. Pretty pretty much we're part of this drilling crew, and we've been hired to find this artifact, and that kind of is a catalyst to it all as well, because they're going to be showing up, this group named Constellation. But, uh, Hark's about to make his character. The appearance doesn't matter too much, but there are some perks that he picks. Bounty Hunter, Alien DNA, and Terra Firma. The uh, bounty hunter. What what is it in bounty hunter that's beneficial, Hark? Well, you got the so you get um, uh, the ability to use the boost pack, and uh, you get the ability uh, to use thrusters on uh, on your ship. And the the boost pack is very important uh, since it's our main method of good transportation. Um, Which, speaking of boost pack, uh, yeah, you'll notice that Hark was looking through the seam in the fence there. Uh, there's a very small gap in which you can reach um, a chest, and 
you equi equip this Deimos pack from that chest, and that is going to allow us to boost. Um, I don't know the exact movement speed difference, but it's going to allow us to move faster, especially with the speed tech that we can go into shortly. Mm -hmm. Not to them, apparently. Pretty much right here, it's a bunch of walking. We're supposed to follow. I love running through that door before it opens. Um, <laughs> right here, so Hark is grabbing a pistol here, and there's a lot of walking and talking here. So he has a little bit of time to set things up. So he's going to throw an explosive over here for setup because there's some baddies who's going to be coming in. But he's then going to start setting up a cover slide, which is where he's going to aim around a corner and hold R, and pretty much right here he's setting it up he pretty much just stored his coordinates. So the next time that he aims down sight with his pistol, he's going to just get slingshotted straight back to that location. We're gonna do a handful of these in a row because it's a lot of back and forth right here. As you can see, he's pushing Lynn along so she moves a little faster. And here's Barrett, the dude from Constellation, the people who hired us to oh. find the artifact. Very nice, Hark just found a, uh, a drug called Amp in there, which will come in handy in a bit. But here he cover slides. Boom, Boom, right back. <laughs> and he goes inside and he uh, he sets up another cover slide here because Barrett and Lynn are about to do a long dialogue. But if you ride the elevator back down into the mine where we started and then back up, Hark is then going to cover slide to go skip the running here. Uh, the, the dialogue between Lynn and Barrett is skipped. So Hark just set up another cover slide and is going to enter Barrett's dialogue range up here and trigger the cover slide to start heading back again towards the elevator down because now there's some pirates who are on their way. And if you go down into the mine again and back up, it skips the pirates landing and they're just here immediately and it's just chaos and uh, you have to kill them all. So hopefully we get some good luck with how the pirates are uh, positioned and whether or not they actually come out of their ship near the explosives. Oh no, they're shy. They got stage <laughs> fright. Oh, there it's we go. Right. There we go. And then right there, he just grabbed a rescue axe from one of the pirates, which is super important. You have to have a melee weapon for... You have to have one of the game's nine melee weapons for a glitch that he's going to be doing a lot throughout the run. So you had to make sure to grab the rescue axe. It spawns every time on at least one of the pirates, so it's not too bad. Also, also I, for everyone who likes cover slides, uh, I'm sorry to inform you, but that's the last time we're going to see it throughout this entire run. Rest in power. It's so sad. <laughs> and then pretty much right here, they're just kind of setting up the story. Barrett's like, hey, you're coming with me. He gives us this watch that doesn't tell time and is like, this is your key to get to the Constellation HQ. We're pretty much a part of Constellation now. We're part of this group that's going around trying to find all the artifacts because we think that... I don't even know like what they think it's going to do. They're just like, hey, it's it's some crazy space thing. Let's... uh, I don't know. I'm missing out on some part of the lore there. But um, there, there's that artifact. He's So he's binding the amp along with the cutter and the rescue axe. So the amp, it increases your move speed by 35%. And it also doubles your jump height, and that lasts for two minutes. And the movement speed bonus is naturally really, really nice because you run faster. And the jumping height bonus from AMP, it's nice at times, especially when we need to platform, but it does affect a glitch we're going to do later. So there's a bit of timing that comes with along with when you use your AMP. But Hark, do you want to talk about the space combat thing we're about to do? Yeah, so uh, uh, what's coming up now is a tutorial sequence where basically just some ships are going to come along. They're after our ship because they think that we have gold on board or something, and they're like, yeah, we need to get that ship because it's worth so much money, even though, I'm going to be honest, it's a little piece of junk. <laughs> but they think it's viable, so... Um, but yeah, basically what we're going to be doing is just just killing a couple ships for the next minute or so, and that's basically all it is. So uh, now would actually be a good time for some donations because this section lasts about a minute and a half. So, Of course, not very much. We got a $25 donation from Haruken that says, you're going to smash it, Hark. Here is our shout out from the Pub Stomping Discord. We also have a $50 donation from Anonymous that says, Great to see Starfield show up at AGDQ. Good luck on the run, Hark. Thanks so much to all the volunteers and runners who make this event happen. 
And then we also have a $5 donation from Luna that says, Octopath Traveler 2 was one of my favorite games of 2023, and I have to see the Goldera fight blindfolded. I couldn't even beat it with my eyes uncovered. Well, if you do want to see that fight, we are at $17,063.90 out of the 25000 that we need for it. That is coming up fairly soon, just in a uh, couple of runs time. So if you want to see that fight alongside Luna, please do keep your donations coming in to the Prevent Cancer Foundation. Awesome, thank you. So right now, the, the ship combat's done, so Hark stands up before he fast travels to a different planet because it's slightly faster, you don't get an animation. And here he stands up again before landing on the planet. And as soon as he loads in, he's going to land on the planet again, which pretty much skips a long landing animation that you'd have to watch every time. And we call that landing animation skip, but you'll notice that he doesn't have a HUD right now. Uh, that's just part of the glitch. Uh, he does. You don't have a. He has the HUD of now because he pulled up a scanner. But with, yeah, see, when he puts it away, he doesn't have the HUD, and you need to load a save. You need, you need to like make a quick save and quick load it to get your HUD back. But to progress the first quest, he just blows up some barrels to kill uh, Brogan here. And then he's gonna fast travel across the solar system or galaxy to a different solar system where he's again going to do a landing animation skip. Uh, but this time, because he stands all the way up, it's a bit of a caveat. If you fully stand up, then you'll have your HUD when you land. But it's not too important, it's pretty niche. But it's now is a probably a good time to start talking about Zips. Who wants to take the lead on Zips? I'm getting a finger pointed at me by Meta. All right, I'll, I'll talk about Zips. So uh, if you have a, a melee weapon like the Rescue Axe, and you have it out and you're in third person, and you jump and you move forward and you block at the same time. You zip forward a little bit. Now, Hark right here is doing this at a wall and trying to pause at the exact moment he's landing, or I guess a moment after he lands. And he's actually looking at a built-in plugin that we use with Live Split that tells him his speed in game. And pretty much he's trying to pause on a small window of frames where he has a specific speed. And if you pause, on that frame and you're the right distance from the wall then if you make a save and load it you'll get a huge speed boost and clip through the wall that one looked really good hark yeah the the last two there i actually go. got nice. blip frames and the right speed but just got unlucky wow yeah a Which blip frame happen. is uh, a visual cue when a runner is going for a zip um it's like one or two frames uh just after you create the save, or, or maybe it's when you load. At some point. At some yeah, point it's like, there. anyway, it's it's one or two frames, so you have to be really, you have to have a keen eye. Mm -hmm. um, Hark is also now looting a chest. Uh, this is actually a vendor chest. Uh, this is the primary reason that we run on an older version of the game, as uh, in the current patch of the game. Uh, all of these chests are teleported somewhere up into the sky, so they we no longer have access to them. Uh, Tomato, would you like to talk about this train. Yeah, uh, I recently had a YouTube video and uh, a commenter told us about this time save where if you interact with the train in the front or the back, it skips the animation. So thank you Foxtrot on YouTube for giving us that free time save. Another important thing to mention as well that we kind of neglected to say was when Hark first clipped out of bounds, the chest, the chest that he looted right there was for 72,000 credits from the ship services vendor. So now Hark has a big fat wallet and uh, we're going to be using that in a moment. But first, though, we've arrived to Constellation. We show the, our watch to the door and say, check it out. Doesn't tell the time. And the door's like, man, that's crazy, and lets us in. And inside is where we're going to be meeting Constellation. And pretty much it's a lot of dialogue here. It's going to be three conversations or so. And to skip a lot of the conversation, what Hark is going to do is fast travel to this spot and then just re-enter. And when you fast travel it, kills some time um a handful of time passes in the game and it's enough time to where the dialogue will have progressed and skips a bit of time skips a bit of dialogue save some time yeah the older strat that we used to do is just run out and run back in um but now hark has come up with this alongside a lot of other optimizations uh that my brain could never have thought of <laughs> <laughs> seriously hark is insane at this game well, yeah, well, these strats are pretty cool. Yeah. 
And now would probably be a good time for donations, Hark, if you're... Yeah, if you think sure. So. Of course, we got ourselves a $20 donation from Sleek that says, this looks slightly different than Halo 4 Dawn Skip or RB Hangar <laughs> Skip, but... I know you're a pioneer in Starfield. Best of luck, Hark in the run, and from the Halo Runs community. That's awesome. awesome. Thank you. Hark, you got a lot of people cheering for you. Hey, yeah, that's yeah, awesome. Got got so many friends. Uh, <laughs> so right here, Hark is crafting a bunch of amp, which, again, is the drug that makes us run fast. And he's then going to fast travel to, um, or first he's leveling up Persuasion and Astrodynamics. Persuasion is for something way later on. Astrodynamics, it lets you jump farther from solar system to solar system. You can now go to a farther away one, which is important because right here we talked to the dude we stole all that money from, and we are going to buy a ship from him, a different ship with that money, and then we're gonna modify it. And Hark's making three main modifications. The first one is he's swapping out the cockpit for a different one. And it's because this cockpit that he's swapping to, the uh, animation of you standing up when you get out of the chair, it's just a second faster. The second thing was he made, a, he duplicated one of the weapons, so he now has a little extra firepower. And the third thing was he put extra fuel tanks on top, so he can now fast travel farther as well. So now he's going to Cheyenne, which is a different solar system, and this is just his first stop in a several on his way to... What's the name of the solar... Is the solar system named Hyla as well? Uh, I think so. I'm not sure. The the planet... Yeah. Well, we're about I, to Actually, find I think out. it is the Hyla system. Right. Yeah. All right. So we're on our way to the Hyla system, and pretty much what Hark was doing with Constellation was just trying to get through the first quest. There's 19 missions in this game, 19 quests, and you can't go and fast travel around solar system to solar system until you finish the first quest. But now that Hark has done that, he's able to go around and he's going to do a huge sequence break. So he's going straight to this planet Hyla 2 and instead of picking a main landing spot on the planet to go to, he's going to actually look for a visual cue in the terrain and land specifically at it. We kind of have like bunny ears that he uh, is landing to the southeast of. And when he lands here, he lands in the closest position that we've found to a big sequence break. Pretty much in the 12th mission of the game. Again, there's 19 of them. He's, and he's supposed to be on the second one. Also, real quick, side note, he's building an outpost and moving it as far away as possible so he can fast travel it to, fast travel to it real quick and uh, skip some running. Some of the indigenous species are in the way there. Which is also just the biggest brain move I've ever seen. Yeah, I can't believe you thought of that, Hark. The, the outpost <laughs> thing. It's just nuts. Um, but anyway, oh, you got the map oh. thing. <laughs> I, Hark is the only person I know who has gotten this to happen. Pretty much, yeah. if, if you do some standing stuff like Hark has been doing, you sometimes fall under the map like this, and it's faster than navigating through the terrain. And Hark also, because he was boosting near all those enemies, he got enough boosts in combat to level up the boost pack. So now he just leveled up the boost pack and he can boost even more. But getting back to the... Oh, and also, another... There's so much happening. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, so uh, real quick, I'm actually making a couple saves because with the trick that we're doing with the outpost, it's actually possible to basically go so fast that the game can straight up uh, kill me sometimes going across the water. I think it's the game's attempt like, it, it has something to do with being in a, uh, quote-unquote, unloaded area and being there for, for a while, and the game just messes up memory and it just kills you, but... It's wild. It's, it's funny. Um, so where Hark just arrived, he just made a save and loaded it so that he has his HUD and can interact with things because this is a huge sequence break just sitting here. When you walk up to it, you get the 12th quest in the game. You don't even need to interact with it to get the quest. You just come near it. And he just solved a little puzzle there with the context clue. And he's on the 12th mission. So we're over halfway through the game now. Uh, you just fast traveled to this point to progress that quest. And we're pretty much just going to be blowing through the quest as fast as we can from here on out. Here, you want to talk about who these dudes are, Meta? Uh, yeah, I also would like to say that that sequence break saves uh, about an hour <laughs> over the glitchless run. Uh, it's... Probably, yeah, definitely the biggest finding. And now we're going to talk to, as uh, Tomato has lovingly referred to them, as Daft Punk. Uh, Hi, guys. In, 
Yeah, actually, I'll just let you continue with this. <laughs> <laughs> um, pretty much, this is a conversation you're supposed to have uh, way later in the game. This is supposed to be a big reveal of a dead companion, uh, but because we skipped so much of the game, uh, it's just a placeholder NPC who happens to look like one of the companions. It's not Mateo, it's just a placeholder. Um, some other community members have gone through the files and found that it was just a placeholder, right, Hark? You mean yet? I have hope. You've never... You're going to tip the... I believe so. All right. Uh, pretty much he's progressing the quest here, talking to Daft Punk, and then he's going to have to go back to Constellation and talk with a few of them. And pretty much right now, the quests are all, hey, we found this artifact. We got a ping on our radar. Can you go grab the artifact? So he's going to be going back to Constellation and talking with Vlad there. And Vlad's going to give him two quests to do. One of them is Unearthed, which requires him to go to first Luna, which is uh, Earth's moon. And the second one, what's the second one called? Uh, it's not Entangled. We get Entangled after. There's Entangled, Unearthed, Final Glimpses. They all kind of like mix in and out with yeah. each other, so it's really weird. They kind of stack. Like one, yeah. When you're doing these quests... Until when you finish one of them, it doesn't actually finish. Finish. It says in a different quest. It says in the quest. Okay, go finish this other quest, and this quest will finish. Yeah. Final glimpses serves as like the umbrella quest line, I guess. Mm -hmm. And then you have unearthed and uh, unity, I think, as well. Yeah. The uh, the old man who just appeared on screen for a second. There's a chance he can spawn like halfway through his chair. <laughs> uh, or under the map. Or under the map. <laughs> we got real unlucky here. Bad Walter RNG. <laughs> but All now right. that he, now that Hark has these quests, he's first jumping to Luna, where he's going to pretty much boost to the top of oh, the building. This is what's going on here. <clears throat> oh. The game wasn't <laughs> letting me get out of my chair. Oh, love that for you. Yeah, we're basically going to visit NASA right now, uh, and at the top of this tower on Luna, there's going to be uh, like an audio log that we have to listen to to progress the quest. It's a couple minutes long. Yeah, and so while that audio log is playing, we're going to be doing another quest so that we aren't just sitting there waiting. Um, a lot of this run has... Um, a pretty good amount of forethought put into it. You know, with the amp routing, you have to be thinking two minutes ahead of time so that you're not conflicting with zips. Mm. Um, yeah, it's really interesting. Which is a good thing to mention. You brought up the amp timing. When Hark was talking to Vlad, he popped one of his amps so that it will last just until right before he's doing his next zip. Because like you saw earlier, zips require you to jump and pause with specific timing. And being able to jump twice as high, not only does it mean you're in the air longer, so it takes longer per zip attempt, but it also just makes the timing a bit harder and you're not entirely used to it. So with popping the amp when he did, it's going to run out like right before he does the next zip. It's crazy how perfectly it's timed out. Also, these uh, this cave here that we are grabbing this artifact from is randomly generated. Um, there are some that take up to 10 minutes to get through. Uh, and because we are running off of a pre-made save here, which was mostly done for quality of life purposes, uh, luckily we also have... Um, the ability to basically manipulate the RNG of these caves. Um, so we have a pre-made save that has uh, the best cave here, which is oh. just... Oh, oh. I, I think I got a game crash. Woo! Oh. We did it! <laughs> all right, it's all right. Uh, worst case scenario, we have to pick up the artifact again. Yeah. Thankfully, the game likes to make, um, make, likes to make a lot of saves. Yeah, we had to revert back to before the artifact. All right. That's all right. That's all right. It happens. Out of your control. <laughs> maybe uh, maybe while you run and get the artifact again would be a good time for a donation or two? Yeah. Of course, we have got ourselves a massive $500 donation from Flamethrower with no comment there. We also have a $25 donation from Bretta Vias that says... Have to see that blindfolded Galdera fight. Come on, y'all. Let's get this incentive met. And then finally, we have a $25 donation from Ralph of Riverwood that says, Hey, you, you're finally awake. You were trying to cross the border, right? 
Walked right into that Imperial ambush. Same as us. And that thief over there. Oh no. That's incredible. <laughs> Thank you. Now that, um... Now that Hark has gotten that artifact that was in the cave, the audio log that he activated on the moon, it's pretty much, it's wrapping up. You can still see the dialogue on the bottom of the screen when he loads in. It's a conversation between Victor Isa, who's a big, big role player in the, uh, the, the whole Starfield universe lore. Uh, pretty much as soon as this dialogue ends, then a door here at NASA's launch tower unlocks. So that's why he went to the moon first, like Meta talked about earlier, so that he could do stuff while that was playing out in the background, because we don't want to just stand there twiddling our thumbs, waiting two minutes for a door to open. Which, this is the door right here. Mark is getting on his rescue axe, because the zip is coming up again. And as soon as it's done, the dialogue there, he makes a save and loads it, because again, he did the landing animation skip. So he didn't have his HUD and couldn't interact with some things like doors, but now he's going inside and it's time for the next zip. Meta, how do you feel about zips? Uh, they are extremely complex and difficult. Um, I attempted to learn them for any percent and uh, they're useful in the faction runs as well. And I was never really able to get them consistently, um, which tough. is unfortunate. They're really, really tough. You basically, um, there's two sort of ways you can get a zip. You would need like a value between, I think it's like 1.4 and 1.9. Uh, and from that you can create a quick save, which will get you through. Or you're looking for a value that's like something like 223, and then you can create a hard save. Uh, so now uh, Hark has zipped out of bounds, and uh, we're going to be doing some out of bounds navigation here. This jump's kind of tricky. Nice! And uh, yeah, we're just going to be going around here and then we're going to go under and we're going to be doing something called the COC which uh, you may be familiar with if you've seen some fallout runs before uh, essentially it means center on cell it's a uh, programmed pre you know it's a location the developers have put in as a, a fail safe in case you fall under the map or something and it will teleport you there so yeah so again Hark is just progressing the quest right now he's going to grab an artifact just like Meta said, uh, he's going to then zip out of bounds and just fall into the void, which will COC him back to where he entered the building at the elevator. Just a nice little shortcut back to where we started. All right. A little bit late. That blip looked good. That looked good. Yeah, that one. All right. Good. That one should be good. And it looks like other stars. Oh, not quite. Oh, no. no, that's too bad. Man, that's I'm not sure what went wrong there. That's some baloney. <laughs> but yeah, in a way, um, zips are... Mm, I would say they're half skill-based and half RNG, because even if you get everything right, you get the, the, the right frame, you get the blip frame uh, where you see yourself out of bounds, you can still uh, not get the trick. So it's it's... It's controllable to an extent, but it, it it is still somewhat a little bit random. Yeah, it's they're really tough. They're 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 finicky. They're just a lot. But now that Hark's outside, Daft Punk is back. Uh, they're just gonna regurgitate some info to us, uh, and pretty much they're like, "Hey, I don't like this guy of Daft." Pretty much this is where Daft Punk broke up. Uh, they're talking no. about how they don't like each other, but um. Hark's like, you know what? I don't like either of you, though. And they both turn to him and be like, you know what? We're going to team up because we don't like you because you don't like us. So Daft Punk is coming to get Hark now. They'll be coming back later. Um, but now that he's completed the unearthed mission, I guess gotten to the point where the unearthed mission says go complete another mission, he's now doing that other mission here at Nishina, where after he talks with Ethan Hughes through the ring doorbell right here, he's going to make a save and load it so he can interact with the door and enter the station. And inside, you're supposed to stand in an airlock while Ethan Hughes does some like protocol stuff, like, I don't know, just checking if you're even supposed to be there. But Hark is going to try and zip to clip out of the room and just blow past Ethan, ignore all the dialogue, and just keep progressing through this area. So he's trying to zip... Ooh, first try, question mark? Maybe, maybe. Oh, no, not oh almost, it's, almost. These zips are it pretty tough. It was the tough. right frame, but wow. again, it just got unlucky. 
Yeah, unfortunately, I feel like the zips get harder and harder the later you get into the run. <laughs> yeah, it's it's really unfortunate. Very nice. Um, All right. So now he's going to run down this hallway and it's going to teleport him pretty much into a different timeline. More or less what's going on in the story at this place is they were doing an experiment on an artifact and it's like a probability universe thing where it's like two universes are going on at once and our goal here is to pick one of the universes and shut down the experiment in it and pretty much set it as this is the the canon. This is our the canon universe. So here we are in the other one. If you don't get this zip first try, you talk to Raphael in the room, who's an NPC, but did Hark get it? Oh. Again, the right frame, but <laughs> a little bit unlucky. I, I'm doing good with timing it. I like uh, I am timing it like really good, just getting unlucky. They're looking good on our end. Of course, you have the uh, the speedometer on your end, so you're able to see it. But um, yeah, Raphael talks to you if you can't get the zip first try. And this zip, all the zips here are really tough. Like the fact that Hark can get them as consistently as he does is just insane. Uh, I, no, that was a little bit late. Also, side note, so Raf try that. Raphael is. I don't even know how long this experiment's been going on. I want to say it's been like weeks or something. It's like a month, yeah. Yeah, this this dude has just been isolated here, and he has the most impeccably maintained that's mustache. It's incredible. <laughs> Where yeah, does he that, get his wax? That's, I am that's incredibly jealous. <laughs> uh, nice, we're going to be doing some more COC shenanigans here. Just an up warp. Nice. Beautiful. As soon as he loads in, then he's going to run out of an ele the elevator he's in and turn around and clip through the back of the elevator. Pretty much the experiment he needs to shut down is in the next room over, the big final room where you fight a bunch of bugs. But that room is locked. But you can go out of bounds by zipping and just breeze straight into the room and start doing all the stuff in there to shut down the experiment. Even with how long it's taking me to get these, uh, this still saves like at least like fifteen minutes. Like this levels, this level takes a long time to decatch. Really, it really does. It's yeah. best mission in the game, though. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't overstay its welcome it casually. I would say. So um, he, here in this room, he needs to run around, hit all these buttons, but there are bugs that pop up and try and fight him, and they get in the way a lot. Um, it's pretty annoying. They're attacking you the whole time. But, of course, Park is just breezing through it. Ooh, yeah, whoops. so establishing something really quick about the boost pack that we were supposed to do forever right. ago, but there's a million things to talk about. Uh, boost pack, normally you press the space bar uh, and you get, like, a, a regular boost. And it was discovered, I believe, by SB... Uh, I hope I'm correct about that. Anyways, if you bind it to an alternate key, like the Alt button, um, you actually get a much faster, more horizontal boost. Uh, and we use that throughout the entire run in all of the categories, uh, depending if we want more distance or if we want more height. If we want more height, we go with space. If we want more distance, we go with uh, the Alt button. Fair enough. I can't get over this mustache. Much. You're welcome to win. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It is truly dapper. He's, he's so he's so slick. Now that right now Hark is leveling up a few things, including uh ballistics, so his guns deal more damage, and pistol, so pistols deal more damage for something later on. Did took a safety strat of leveling up shield. And uh what was the other one that you leveled up? The ballistic system? Ballistics and pistol. Yep. Gotcha. But that's it's all just for combat stuff. Um, but now he's making his way across the galaxy to where Daft Punk has decided to hold their reunion tour, where they're going to be waiting for him and pretty much say, "Hey, we're still mad at you. We want to fight you." And it's another big ship combat, and it's really, really hard to do this fight fast. Really hard, according to some people. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Shots fired. Hark is a special breed. Yeah, just incredibly talented. Truly cannot emphasize enough how insanely good Hark is at this game. Yeah, a lot of the time these ships will sort of fly right over you, and it's quite difficult to track them uh, because they go faster than your camera turns. Mm -hmm. So uh, you really have to uh, basically predict where they're going. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
And they, they really like to just try and fly away from you out of range and pull you away from the other enemies you have to kill. There's three guys oh, yeah, they, here that he's trying to fight. At they also teleport, so yeah. that's fun. They teleport <laughs> and go invisible. It's, it's, it's really, really fun to try and do quickly. Um, something important to mention, though, is when Hark was traveling to this point and standing up, he did pop another amp. Maybe wondering, why did he pop an amp if he's still just sitting in his captain's chair? Well, it's because he's going to be doing some running in a moment. And again, he wants the amp to run out at a very specific moment before he does the next zip. And it's just perfectly it's timed. No, that was a really solid combat, dude. Really, really good. Again, landing animation skip. And then uh, going to be doing some running to just blow past a handful of enemies. Skip having to fight them. Also, the reason why I'm not making a save and reverting to get my HUD back is we have a zip coming up and you have to save and load anyways whenever you go for a zip. So mm. it's just faster to wait until you, you know, you like your, you basically get a, get a good zip to revert your save. So small optimizations. Yeah, and you may be asking, like, well, you were able to go to the other planet to skip to the Unity Quest line. Why don't you just come to this planet and start Revelation? Mm -hmm. The unfortunate thing is that um, the developers thought of this <laughs> and that this base is essentially just a, a generic enemy base until you've completed uh, Final Glimpses, I believe. Yeah. And then if you watch the top right corner, uh, you'll see the amp runs out, like, any moment now. Which is, TM. Is this, you're too fast, Hark. You're getting here before. <laughs> Did you just I do might this have been first try on amp first no try? No way. Oh. oh, right frame. I was about to be so mad at you. <laughs> yeah. So if you remember, amp gives you that double height, right? Which totally messes up with the uh, the timing for zips. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. We'll get it. We'll get it. Good old Masada sips. Yeah. First try every time, about 13% of the time. <laughs> <laughs> and that's not, bad, it's, not bad. No, no. Solid. There we go. Nice. Now that he's inside, he's going to be going to do another zip. And this is the last zip of the run, at least in the current route. We do know of another one that you can do that's even I'm harder. i go for it once or twice. Yeah? Oh, man. Yeah. Man. All right, let's do it. Um... Yeah, this, this run's been going pretty good so far. Oh, so. this run's so solid. But this zip right here is really tough because not only do you have to get the zip right as normal, but there's the stuff on the left of... He's trying to hit it pretty much in that little gap between the fridge on the left and the pole on the right. And it's really easy to bump into either of those and not be able to do the zip. Nice. nice. Dude. So nice. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to go for it. It's all right. No? That's uh, completely fair. <laughs> okay, I'll go for it once. once. I will go for okay, it once. Okay, okay, okay. I think we're, we're running underestimate here anyways. Yeah. So. If, if Hark gets it this one time, everyone watching the stream has to donate $5. I will donate $20 if you can get this. Also, I'm on AMP, just just, just so you know. Oh, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> That's going to make it even worse. Yeah. <laughs> and this zip that he's going to go for once, it would skip this elevator ride. Um, normally we just walk backwards out of this little room and we go right back to the elevator ride. Let's see. I'm seeing the blips. Slightly wrong timing. I'm going to go for it just a little bit longer because this is a cool... It, this this does look cool when you get it. Mm -hmm. And even That's if... the right frame. Ooh. Oh, oh, oh. Ah. Uh. Even if Hark doesn't get a first try, though, everyone watching should still donate $5. I guess. Yeah. We are here for a great cause, after all. Yeah. Right frame again. Let's see. Got hey! it all. There you go. That, that's the hardest thing. Beautiful. The <laughs> Pretty much that skips an entire elevator ride. Um, right here, so he just picked up a pistol. You notice there's a shotgun right next to it. He grabbed a bunch of chems too. You don't need to worry about getting encumbered or anything, but he grabbed a pistol here. Normally, we've been grabbing a shotgun there to do this fight. You're supposed to fight this dude who's invisible. He's hard to spot. Right now, Hark is standing in a spot where he has an overview of where he spawns so he can see where he is. 
And normally we grab the shotgun, but last night when we were doing a, a practice walkthrough, Mark, did you accidentally, or no, you forgot the ammo and the shotgun earlier, so you grabbed this, and we're just sitting here watching him do this fight, and we're like, whoa, this pistol's really good. Um, yeah. <laughs> so we're thinking we're going to be using this pistol now for the rest of the time, so. Yep. Yeah, the, new, this new routing changes. Discovered uh, last night. Mm -hmm. This routing changes. Uh, I think, yeah, maybe about twenty hours old. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but through this door, Hark is then going to talk with Daft Punk one final time. He's going to do a bunch of persuasion with them. Which he grabbed some drugs right before grabbing uh, the pistol. One of the drugs increases your persuasion. The other one increases your movement speed. The persuasion is for this moment right here. It's the final real challenge of the run. If you've done everything so far so good, you've gotten every zip first try, well, you still have to persuade Daft Punk to, you know, give up on their reunion tour. First try. Split. First nice. try. That's so awesome. All right, Mike That's check. some GDQ one, two, luck right three. there. Can you hear me? My name is... And uh, we're, we're getting towards that, the end of the run. I'm we have to sit so here and wait for this, and then Park is going to do a bit of fast traveling. Maybe time for a couple final donations? Of course. You're sitting there, the $5 donation train, for getting that. We do have uh, Z-Cubed from the previous run there. $70 says, donating the amount promised during the run. Congratulations, Logan, on that great run. And we also have a $50 donation from Zigmu that says, thank you all for an amazing event. Awesome. So now that Hark has that final artifact, he has to go into his ship and build what's called the armillary. Pretty much, spoilers for Starfield, cover your ears for like 10 seconds. The, the artifacts build the armillary. The armillary brings you to the unity. The unity is the center of the universe, which is pretty much the pathway to other universes in this movie's Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Yeah, and the Unity is uh, the vision you've been seeing since the very start of the game. Yeah. And, and that's now just revealed to you, essentially. Yeah. So Hark is traveling there. When he arrives, he's going to walk forward and see a mysterious figure standing there. And because we didn't spend much time on character creation, it's kind of hard to recognize. But this is us. This is usually when us speedrunners get to see what we look like for the first time in the run since we don't really pay attention during character. Do we have the Raphael the mustache? Scene? Oh, oh my god. No way. Oh my god. I am as much This is amazing. Incredible. Wow. That's good. In this is the, just the final dialogue. He's picking specific options to get through it faster. Then he's gonna walk into the Unity and end the run. Hark, what time? When does uh when does time end for the run? Time ends when the screen goes fully white. Awesome. So uh, let us know coming what it up is. in about three seconds. And time. GG. Awesome job, Hark. You what a it. solid run. If you were here, I'd give you a hug. <laughs> Next time. Yeah, fantastic job. So good. Hark, why don't you sign us out? Uh, well, I I would like to give a huge shout out to the to the Starfield speedrunning scene. Uh, it, it's been a really cool experience. Um, when I first started speedrunning this game, well, technically, I I uh, found a couple of strats, and I was like, there's no way I'm going to speedrun this game. Like, other people surely are going to be way better at speedrunning than me. And, like, I've never even, you know, played too much of Fallout or any other Bethesda game. But, you know, as fate would have it, you know, I have the current record for the game, and, you know, like, and we've, the whole community has come together to find some really amazing strats. So, yeah. Yeah, um, if you would like to learn Starfield, uh, whether that's any percent or any of the faction runs, um, you can find us on the speedrun.com leaderboard for Starfield. Uh, we have a Discord there. Uh, we have a full any percent tutorial. And yeah, um, it's a relatively low barrier access game to learn, and it's pretty fun. So don't let the zips dissuade you. Yeah, and there's also a whole lot of other stuff, like there's backups. Uh, for, for the first zip in the game, we have something called a slip. We didn't even cover that, but it's much easier. 